Do I low-key look like a toddler right now? Yes. Do I still look adorable? Fuck yeah. Hello. Oh, that was like a nice ponytail flip. Oh, hello. Hi. And welcome to this six-month saga of me trying to make a pair of underwear. And though granted, I did sew them entirely by hand, but it took me six months. <laughs> But hello, hi, how do you do? If you're new here, my name's Caitlin. Nice to meet you. Welcome to this very fine shindig we're having over here. It's nice having you. This video is one of a series I will be posting on this channel about me making my butterfly gown. If you would like to know a little bit more about the dress and the design process, you can click above me for the video on that. And without further ado, we shall be getting into this, my dudes. Now, I know you all are wondering, is this microphone connected to anything? And no. It is not. I know what else you're probably thinking. Caitlin, what the heck are combinations? And well, that is what I am here to answer today, my dudes. But first, I will need you to really open your hearts and minds to travel back with me. Travel back to a simpler time. A time where women wore bugs. A time where murdering your husband was as easy as slipping him a little cleaning solution from the kitchen. You know, some guys just really can't hold their arsenic. But the Victorian era, that is where we're headed, my dudes. And to answer your question, combinations were the undergarment that was worn underneath the corset. Now I shall insert a picture, and a picture. Oh, and another picture. Oh, those ones are pretty. Oh, whoa. Now that you know what a pair of combinations looks like, you might have the same question that I did of, how the heck do you pee in that? And well, logically it makes sense, as there is no front seam going down between your crotch. Between your crotch? Over your crotch. Between your legs. That seam? Not there. Unexistent. But then it comes down to the real question. Are they really that easy to pee in? So I'm not lying right now when I say there will be an ease of pee rating at the end of this video, as I am actually quite curious as to how easy they will be to pee in. Because there, there's so many frills, there's so many flounces. How do you not get pee on that? That's, that's the main question. Do you just get pee on it and do you just accept that? That's, I don't know. I don't know, we'll find out together. So without further ado, I shall pass the mic off to voiceover Caitlin, who will be introducing all the materials that we used for this project. <sighs> off to you, Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. First off, you're gonna need your own personal emotional support cat, then get yourself some off-white muslin as that was the material used for this project. We also used some cotton woven lace, some other lace that I'm pretty sure is polyester, but it was very white, so I ended up dyeing it with some black tea. Some silk thread in the color cream. Very fancy, I know. We also used some linen thread. And of course you can't use linen thread without your wax cake. <laughs> Words. We also used some silk buttonhole twist in the color also cream. And these beautiful antique buttons that I would show you closer up, but I definitely could not open that lid. Back to you, Caitlin. At this point, we are now on to the construction of the garment. I first began with the bottoms. I decided that I want to have a strip of lace going down both outer side seams on both the legs. So that was kind of my first order of business. I used a weird, strange back stitch. To strangely, I would say, tack it on. A lot of insertion lace that I had looked up was usually whip stitched into place and that honestly would have been the more logical answer to this. Again, not the brightest tool in the shed. Because my lace had a scalloped edge, my brain decided that that was not an option. My good sir, I swear to God, if you start eating plastic again, I will eat you. So now that we had that side seam down, the next course of action was, oh, hello. Yo, just, oh, ah, the chest. Ooh, God. Our next course of action after felling down all of our raw edges is to add a strip of lace that we will later be threading a really pretty green ribbon through. I'm very excited. I got a really pretty silk ribbon for this project. And I'm just, I don't have a lot of like lacy frilly things. And so I'm just really excited, guys. I'm very excited for when these are finished. I'm just gonna be prancing around the house in these like, oh, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> this lace, again, I decided to do my strange back stitch because in this case I can understand why I did that as this lace is a woven lace and it's 100% cotton so it didn't really have any stiffness or really any body to it. I guess it could 
sort of be an uneven backstitch, I guess you could call it, sort of call it. But after that frill is added on, then we get to add some ruffles, which was very exciting. I cut one strip of luslin. I quit, quit, quit. I cut one strip of muslin that was twice the length. That was twice the length of the leg laid out flat. Then I decided to gather it the Victorian way. Now this can be a very relaxing progress, but it is quite tedious, as to gather the Victorian way, you must pick up two threads while passing over four. Did I low-key hate the process? Yes. Did it give me beautiful gathers, though? Yes. Will I probably end up doing this again? Probably, yeah. Because honestly, like, once I stroked the gathers with a needle and kind of really made them all beautifully laid out, Ooh, those ruffles, my heart, were so good. Oh my God, amazing. We then add those onto both the bottoms of our pant legs, again, with our strange ass back stitch. After that is finished, we add our final bit of frill to the bottom. It has a really pretty scalloped edge. This lace literally is so pretty. I absolutely adore it. I wish I had more. And this bit I actually did correctly by whip stitching it onto the gathered. Then we move on to the final step of the legs, the crotch flaps. Is there probably a more technical term for these? Yes. Will I continue calling them crotch flaps? Also yes, because they are pretty much crotch flaps. So once we have those beautiful crotch flaps backstitched into place and our raw edges fell down, we move on to the very last step of both the leg sleeves. Oh, you thought we were done? Not quite, we gotta do some more gathering. Since both legs are supposed to be a bit more baggier and a little bit flowier, we will be gathering both the tops of them to fit onto the waistband. After we finish gathering, use our strange backstitch again to attach our leg sleeves to the waistband, we are finally finished with the legs, and it's time to move on to the bodice. It was at this point that I kind of had a little bit of epiphany. I'm not actually quite sure if this is historically accurate. This is kind of just a logic thing that kind of popped into my brain, but I thought I would share it with you guys anyways. So as I was kind of looking over more reference photos for combinations, I noticed that they had a lot of bows wherever ribbon was inserted into lace. It was then the realization sort of hit me that maybe the bows are there because the ribbons aren't actually sewn into the combinations, but rather just inserted into the lace, tied off. Then once the ribbons kind of get ratty looking or the combinations need to be washed, the ribbons will be untied and taken out of the combinations. Now granted, I do not have a lot of historical evidence or factual based information to really, that kind of is what evidence is, wow. But in my mind, to kind of preserve the prettiness of the ribbons, it does make a little bit of sense. So from here on out, I will be making the ribbons on my combinations removable rather than sewing them in. Unfortunately, at this point, I had already sewn in the ribbons at the legs, so I probably will be cutting those out in the future and replacing them with ribbons that I can easily replace. Because then this also makes it more fun because then I can trade out the ribbons. So then if I have like a pink ribbon on my hat, I can put pink ribbon in my combinations and I'll be like, ho, ho, ho. I am matching. Does anyone know I'm matching aside from me? No, but that makes it fun, you know? You feel, you feel me? Maybe I'm alone in this, I don't know. It was also at this point that I took a three month break from this project because I got overwhelmed. Because I could not for the life of me figure out how I wanted to situate the lace slash trim on the bodice. So at this time we will be taking a short intermission to watch my cats play with a laser pointer. Off to you, Ollie and Luna. Thank you, Ollie and Luna. But now, from what all of you have been waiting for, 
the bodice. It wasn't until I had actually seen some pictures of someone else's combinations that finally gave me that kind of oomph and motivation to really get back into this project. And that was Kat's Costumeries. Co costumeries? Costumeries. Costumeries? Costumery. Cat's costumes combinations. They're great. She actually also has a whole entire video like explaining her entire process of making her combinations, which I 10 out of 10 recommend watching. So with this newfound motivation, I began my combinations with a newfound vengeance. I was so excited. I got all the motivation and I was like, ho ho, we are going to finish this and I will look adorable. So excited. And so now I shall pass the mic over to voiceover Caitlin to show you how I ended up placing the lights. Off to you, Caitlin. Okay, so after a lot of back and forth and a few months later, I have finally figured out how exactly I want bodice to kind of sit and look. It honestly came out a lot simpler than I was planning, but honestly, I think it'll be cute in the end. I ended up deciding to whip stitch on this lace. I was originally just gonna let it kind of free flow, but then realized that I wanted to thread through some ribbon. I wanted it to have a bit more sturdiness to it, so I ended up tacking down the bottom part as well with its weird sort of back stitch. So yeah, that is where we're at. We got this. We, we got this. Yeah. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Thank you, Caitlin. And with our lace finally put in place, we really jumpstarted into this project again. Now since this lace, as I mentioned before, does not have a lot of body and or stiffness to it, I decided to attach it right onto the muslin so it would have a nice backing of support. To attach it, we did a nice whip stitch at the top, and then again, our strange back stitch on the bottom to kind of really tack that down. I then realized that I would need to sew 42 buttonholes as I would be making it an incision between every single flower motive along the ribbon. This part of the process I was not as fond of as I had never really sewn a buttonhole before in my life. I attempted once before and learned that I definitely did not sew it right. So this was my first time actually correctly sewing a buttonhole. And my first few weren't the best, but I definitely started getting the hang of it by, you know, like my 35th. But once I had finally finished them all and thread the green ribbon through, all of my doubts about that maybe not being the best course of action kind of just fluttered away like butterflies. As this thing looks so freaking cute, I'm in love with it. I kind of just want to make a blouse like this, just like a little camisole kind of like tank shirt. Like, that would be so cute. Oh my god, guys. This could be like my next project, even though I have like seven already lined up. The next step of this was to fit it onto my body. That kind of hurt. I really need to stop swinging this around. As I said, next step was fitting this on my body and fitting it with the straps on. The shape in which I arranged the lace actually really helped in how everything kind of sat on my body. It's kind of this looking shape. I was kind of iffy on the back because I kind of just arranged it and was like, that looks good. And then didn't exactly see how it looked before I kind of stitched everything down. So that was a little bit of a mistake on my part. The little one. Once I tacked on both the straps, it did really well in preventing any of that little back panel from scrunching up once I gathered everything with the ribbon, which was perfect and exactly how I wanted it to go. So like, that happened on a fluke. My sewing journey is just a bunch of happy accidents. Gotta be honest. And now we shall hear a little bit from past Caitlin on the fitting of the bodice. Caitlin. Hello. Hi. So this is the bodice so far. It is gathering quite well. Um, you can see through the buttonholes that I made with the for the ribbon to thread through. I do like it and I definitely, even though it literally took forever, I do definitely still think that it was the right decision to make the buttonholes. Initially also, I definitely thought the straps kind of looked a bit too thick, but with this gathered and everything, and I think once the waist is gathered, I think the straps actually will look quite cute and I think that they're honestly sort of perfect. They're kind of not pinned exactly in the place that they will be quite yet. I think this one actually is, but this one I think needs a little bit of maneuvering around. I realize I'm like filming this hat. Like who wants to see my face with combinations? Just look at this hat. That's a great hat. Once I fix how this strap is placed, 
I am going to try these on with the bottom part of the combination so then I can figure out where exactly I need to pin along the bottom of this so I know where to start gathering. Um, and then from there, you know, we'll gather, attach it to the waistband, and then start on our front buttonholes. So yeah, very exciting. Thank you, Caitlin. At this point, I was fitting the bodice to the waistband, and you know, I didn't want to entirely spoil what the ending would look like, so I didn't film any of this portion. But pretty much, I was tucking in the bodice. I tucked it in, got it all situated how I wanted it, then pinned all the points where the top of the waistband hit on the bodice, as that would be the line of where I would be gathering. And now, we are back yet again to the stage of gathering. We love gathering here. So again, we did the Victorian method of picking up two threads while passing over four and then stroking our gathers to make them look oh so pretty. Next, we are attaching the bodice to the waistband, again with our weird ass back stitching as I kind of have come to the point where I feel like that's just the best way to attach this very flimsy lace. And at this point, we have finally reached the final stretch. What is the final stretch, you ask? Well, let me tell you. The final stretch is adding on our beautiful tiny glass buttons that I got from my great-grandmother. She gives me a lot of vintage buttons, which honestly I love when I get those giant jars from her because I'll just sit for a few hours and I'll just be sorting buttons. I have my dark buttons, my light buttons, my glass buttons, and my plastic buttons. You know, we got, got all the piles. It's great. I love it. It's very relaxing. So, I went to my little tiny jar of little tiny glass buttons picked out a few that matched, and then got to work sewing on these buttons and making the final buttonholes. Once we finally finish those guys, guess what? We're done! This is so exciting! Literally the last step we have is just throwing through that last ribbon in the waistband, and then we are done. Like, I'm so excited they turned out so good. They literally turned out so much better than I thought they were going to. Like, at that halfway point, man, I was real scared. I was, I definitely did not think that they were gonna turn out as good as I hoped for them to. I am oh so proud of these. And now I shall finally pass on the mic to Caitlin so she can really show you how beautiful these turned out. So take it away, Caitlin. You're sitting exactly where I need to stand. But oh my God, they are so good. They are so comfy. They are definitely a lot simpler than I had originally intended them to come out, but honestly, honestly, I still think these are adorable. I just realized that's pinching eight. <laughs> As you can see, these aren't actually technically finished yet. I still have to put all the buttons and buttonholes down the front, and it was gonna take me a little while to sew a bunch of buttonholes. So I think my only complaint with these is that I definitely think I should have made them a little bit longer. They kind of end just above my knee and I feel like they kind of should have ended kind of like mid kneecap length. So they're maybe like an inch shorter than I would have liked, but honestly, it's not the end of the world. But now, the time that you've all been waiting for, the pee test. Okay, so I did go to the bathroom in these because I was really, really curious as to how in God's name that was gonna work without me peeing on anything. And it worked so well. I don't know why I doubted it. Literally, I would give these a 10 out of 10 pee rating because I think what I forgot was that the seam isn't just split down the center and like in the front, it's also split down the back. So like when you sit down, you just park the whole thing and everything's out of the way and it's literally perfect. Like the peeing process went so much better than I thought it was gonna go, so you know. 10 out of 10 for that, so. I apologize for there not being more footage of me actually making the garment. I got a lot of some footage, other footage was just bad and I don't know why I choose to film it that way, so. I was very limited in what I had to present to you all, but I still wanted to make this and kind of show you my little process, because I'm very proud of it and I'm very proud of what I did, so. Thank you for coming along on this journey. I hope you had fun. I hope you have a lovely day. And I will see you next time. Time to shimmy out of the frame. Shimmy, 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 shimmy out of the frame. Amazing. I don't know what these arm motions are. But that's not the point. That is not exact. Oh, that is why we're here. Never mind. But to it. I'm hitting things with this cord. Crinoline is a. We're not talking about crinolines. How do you. How don't you pee on every. Like, why? Huh. I don't know. My brain just keeps going, please, please. Ha ha ha. $2. $20 platters, platters for $2.
How could I give that up? Two dollars! Just saying, just two dollars. Was a bargain. Sales like that don't come every day. Unless you check Joanne's often, and they probably do. You're fabulous. Don't forget it.